All right. Is everything on? Are we on? I believe it started. There it is. There it is. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. This is our teaching kitchen with Jolene. Jolene is a registered dietitian here at Chartwells, uh, here at UW Green Bay. And we are going to be making two salsas today. We have wonderful students that are with us that are going to be following along in her demo. And um, we also posted the recipes after with this video. So if you weren't able to join us, you can um, get your ingredients and make it yourself. Okay, so without further ado, here is Jolene. Thank you, Stephanie. Welcome everyone. I'm excited to be here. As Stephanie had mentioned, we're going to be doing some two salsas. Yes, so go ahead and grab your kit. Uh, we are doing a jica de gallo today and a mango salsa. So go ahead as I'm talking through the ingredients, pull those out, unwrap them. We're going to start with the jica de gallo. And the spotlight for this recipe is our jicama. Has anyone had jicama before? Yeah, but not for a long time. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, I cut it down for you in the exact amount. It's a four ounce portion. Oh, okay. But jicama typically comes, it is a very thick and brown skin. So you're going to want to peel the jicama before you eat it. And it tastes like an apple, believe it or not, but not as sweet. So it's uh, kind of an apple type crisp texture. And it grows mostly in Mexico and Central America on long vines, but the part that you eat is gonna be in the ground. So it's the root part of it. So it is a great source of fiber. Um, yes, even though we do remove the skin, the uh, inside membrane has a lot of fiber properties to it. So when looking to have salsa at a gathering, a party, um, you know, it's a good way to get some fiber in there. Also a great source of vitamin C. So like bell peppers and oranges, jicama is a great source of that as well. Um, so you had mentioned, Richard, I believe had mentioned you'd had it before. How did you have it? What form? I don't exactly remember because it really was a long time ago, but I, I think we literally just cut it up and just ate it. Okay, yeah, that's exactly one option that you can do. Um, if any of you have had apple slices dipped in peanut butter, you can do this with jicama as well. So a uh, really quick snack. I've seen it at Fresh Time Festival Foods. You can purchase this in you know, the produce in the root vegetable section. Um, you can also slice it up into a slaw. So like Kevin, you'll get a lot of color similar to this, but this will be a, a fresher texture. Um, and you can even throw it into soups and stews. So enough about jicama, let's go ahead and pull out our jica de gallo recipe card. So we're making a traditional salsa, uh, but basically cutting the tomato with the jicama. So it's gonna be equal parts of each. So we will start with our jicama and we want to do a half inch dice. So I have my gloves on. Um, always important to wash your hands anytime you're gonna be preparing for yourself and others. Um, I'm here on site on campus, so I'm gonna throw some gloves on. Uh, make sure that you have a sharp knife, um, index finger and thumb around the blade um, or a hairy knife would work just fine. And go ahead and do a, about half inch strips across the jicama. So I'm gonna go kind of a rocky motion through the jicama. And then I'm gonna go turn it and go directly across again. So almost like a crisscross. The key with salsas is you want to make sure that your main ingredients are the same size. So this is a good uh, demo to work on your knife skills. Um, thinking about chips, um, you really want to make it nice and fine so you can fit a good amount on a chip. Um, 
So we can go ahead and have that chopped up. If you missed a piece, kind of go through and run through it again. And we will add that to, if you have a bowl on hand, we'll just get that added right to our bowl. And this recipe is very versatile. So for smaller chunks, go ahead and run through that again. Then we will take our tomato. So we'll also do a half inch dice on that. I turn it on its side and cut the stem portion off first. What actually works really nice is a bread knife for cutting a tomato. But if your knife is really sharp, um, that's going to be the best because otherwise you tend to smush it down. So you don't want to smush the tomato. I don't mind the inside of the tomato, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it in there. But you can certainly scoop out the membrane. When I get about halfway through, it's a little bit difficult to curl my fingers around. So I turn it on its side and then run the knife through. All right, and then turn it horizontally, and I'll get my half inch dice. How are we doing? That looks juicy. Very juicy tomato. <laughs> the half inch dice of the tomato, we will move on to our jalapeno. And if you're not a fan of heats, you can save it for your roommate. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna switch to a paring knife. I This is actually a really large jalapeno, but we need uh, about half of it. So I'm gonna use a quarter of my jalapeno. You're gonna start by cutting the stem off. And then I'm gonna cut about a quarter of it. So a little bit different than the tomato and the jicama, we're gonna do a mince to, uh, style on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the seeds. So kind of cutting around the inside skin there. If you love heat, you want to leave the seeds in and you can just mince right through it directly. Um, I prefer more of a medium salsa. So I am going to go ahead and dispose of the seeds. Any brave souls out there going to leave the seeds in? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have my two half peppers. I'm going to cut very, very thin slices. Um, if you wear contacts, warning, make sure that you wash your hands really well after dealing with uh, jalapenos. So you sliced it in half and then went around the insides in order to get those centers out. Yes. So now I'm doing a very thin vertical slice so that way I can get the um, width of it. Yep, looks good, looks good. And I only need about a little bit, so. That seems good for me. So now I have my thin slices and I'm basically going to run my knife through it to create very small minced pieces. So 
mincing is about the size of the jalapeno seeds. So very small bites. Um, I'm going to run it through one more time just to make sure that it's nice and minced. I don't want any surprises where I get a large chunk. And I can go right in. This is going to be a half one. <laughs> Half of this jalapeno is going to go into our mango salsa, so we will save this and keep for our next recipe. Next up is onion. Um, we have a red onion here. We're going to use this for both recipes, and uh, we only need about one ounce of it. So um, just like a small, probably a quarter of your red onion. So I'm going to go ahead and start by peeling the skin. You want to get the flaky part off. And sometimes it's a challenge. All right, and since we're just going to use about a quarter of this, so I'm going to cut the root off. So I'm going to turn it on its side, curl my hand that I'm holding on the onion and just cut that stem off. Any thick skin on the onion, you can peel off. Um, the texture of it isn't always pleasant. So I usually peel off that first layer so that way you're not getting any chewy flaky parts remaining. stubborn and it's really up to your discretion so I'm going to use a quarter of the onion so I'm going to go ahead and cut about a quarter of that and then we're going to do about in between the jicama and the jalapeno I'm peeling the pit out of it I'll dispose of that and probably about a quarter inch dice Onion has a very, very strong, potent flavor, so making the cuts a little bit smaller, less of a chunk, is going to be ideal for your salsa. So I went through and cut it, and then I'm going to turn it and run it through the other way. Again, the key here is no matter how big or small, uh, making sure that the knife cuts are the same size. And going slow, so you don't cut yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. I will say most knife cuts occur when you're in a hurry and when you have a dull knife. So always make sure that that knife is sharpened. All right, so we have our red onion in there. It's starting to look like something here. Um, next up, we have cilantro. Um, you can pull about half of that because they go into both recipes. Um, fun tip about cilantro is a lot of the flavor is found in the stems. So you want to completely chop everything. So sometimes with parsley, you kind of pick it off the leaves. Um, cilantro and even parsley, you can go ahead and use the entire part of it. So I'm going to curl it up a little bit, fold it in half, and run my knife through once or twice and throw it in. Um, anyone here have the cilantro where it tastes like soap? 
Jean. No, okay, I actually do. So cilantro to me tastes like soap. It's a little bit soapy. It's out there, I swear, Google it. Um, so in this case, if you have, you wanna make a crowd favorite, wanna bypass the cilantro, you can throw parsley in there. It's a nice herb to throw in and add some color. But here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and run my knife through, kind of curl it up as close as I can, run my knife through the cilantro a couple times. That actually makes some sense because I have a friend who is not a fan of cilantro and I'm wondering if it's because she might have a gene and that's what she hates, so. You should ask her. I should. I should ask her what cilantro tastes like to her. I'm not a picky eater, um, but for some reason, whenever I say no cilantro, everyone's like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I like everything. All right, and last up is the lime and the salt. So we're gonna use uh, half of the lime for the mango salsa. So um, let's get the lime ready. When you buy them at the store, sometimes they can be a little bit tough. So take your lime on your cutting board with your hand on top and roll it. So soften it to kind of get the juices going inside. Get a good grip. So one question with the cilantro. Is yes. it easier to cut when you pack it nice and tight? Yes. Yes, kind of folding and I folded it in half, kind of rolled the leaves a little bit and run my knife through a couple times. Got it. So open my salt, we need a quarter teaspoon. Um, the other recipe uses a three quarter teaspoon. So you can just take a pinch of this and throw it into our recipe here. Um, this is completely up to you. If you like it more salty or less salty, that's the beauty of really making your own recipes is you can control the ingredients versus buying at the store. Um, I might already have a lot of high salt content in it. Um, so we'll take our lime then. I already rolled it, it's nice and juicy. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it into my hand uh, and let it go into the bowl. So make sure that you are catching any seeds. I got a bonus lime, there's actually no seeds in mine. <laughs> so that's always nice, you don't have to search for that. So go ahead and squeeze it a couple times. The lime adds a really nice flavor, um, but along with that, it has acidic properties. So it's gonna hold your salsa for a while. Um, this is your workout for the day. Yes. Ooh, it looks so tasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my Glove hand and swish it around and and there you go. There you have your salsa. So you can go ahead and set this aside if you want to place it into the bowl, saran it, and then chill it. So it's best when it's chilled. So you can chill it for a couple hours, use this on tacos, um, grab some chips, and enjoy. Any questions on the hica de gallo? I'm gonna switch my gloves out and we can move on to the mango. How are they looking? I think we gotta do them a second. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I can chill for a minute or two. No problem, I'm just gonna swap my ingredients around. Any questions? Am I getting any? I don't, I mean, it's, this is uh, pretty straightforward. A lot of cutting things into sizes and throwing them in the salsa. There you go. 
Now you see Hickam on the star and you'll be empowered to go forth and say, hey, I'm gonna make some salt tonight and throw some Hickam on there. I'm all about the Hickam on peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great snack. Um, I'm like, I have peanut butter at home. That would be good. Mm -hmm. And for the kids. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful. This is a good day, two for one. Two for one. Yeah, I thought um, getting a variety for you guys. Wow. Salsas. Our next salsa is going to feature, ooh, that's awesome. Yay! That's great, that's great. And yeah, the more you do it and um, you can make it versatile with a bunch of ingredients and you can even try it more of a kind of a liquidy, smaller cuts to have it like liquidy and uh, versus a chunky. But your traditional pico is going to be a chunky salsa with not a yeah. lot of liquids. So yeah, looks good. And the most important is the lime and the salt to bring it all together. Oh, I need the salt. Yeah. Oh, did you forget the salt? <laughs> Damn. Oh, no, that's a lot. How's it going, Karina? Hmm? Oh, I didn't know my mic was muted, but how did it turn out? Really good. All right, so go throw that one in the fridge while we make our second salsa. Yes, kind of clean up your workspace a little bit, and we're going to jump into the mango salsa. While you're doing that, I'll talk a little bit about our ingredients here. Uh, we got the mango. We already worked with the cilantro and the lime and the jalapeno. Um, but we also have a red bell pepper, some cumin, a little bit of heat along with the jalapeno, and a little bit of canola oil. So what's canola oil? Canola oil, it is a plant-based oil and it's a liquid at room temp. So it is going to be a little bit healthier than um, some of your saturated solid room temp oils. And it's really going to bring the salsa together with the mango. So mango, um, does anyone know the staple of mango where it originates from? India. All right, yes, India. Yes. So it's a very important crop in India and it is a staple in Indian cuisine. So you'll see it a lot in their dishes, um, but it also has some pretty impressive health benefits as well. Much like jicama, it has a great source of vitamin C. And when we cut into the mango, you'll see that dark orange color uh, that's referred to as a beta carotene. So great for your eyes and also some B vitamins, which support your brain and nerves. So this will be great for getting up this call today and using it for a study snack. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we are going to learn how to cut a mango. Um, the stem on the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and put that stem side down and have it on and cut away the sides. So if you've never cut a mango before, 
it's flat. The pit is flat and oblong. So it's not like an avocado at all. It's very flat and oblong. So we're gonna take our knife and basically cut about a half inch from the center all the way down on both sides and cut around the stem, the seed, I'm sorry. There we go. And then I'll spin it around and cut on the other side. So here we have both sides. Um, we're coming up in April, but anytime I don't like to waste food. So you can feel the hard pit in there. So you can go ahead and cut around to um, take some of that mango as well off. Edible mango. And that's probably about as much as I'm going to get. So not too much. Um, that. I prefer to use a paring knife. So there's a couple of ways that you can uh, get the mango out. You could one, either peel it ahead of time, but I prefer to cut the sides off and then we're going to score it on the inside. So we'll make crisscross cuts. We'll do vertical cuts first down the inside of the mango and then we'll turn it and do crisscross so making little cubes be very careful with this you can even place it on the cutting board to be away from your hands I'm going to do both pieces right away. All right. Still kind of chopping away. I'm going to go ahead and peel. The mango out while I'm waiting for everybody. Get rid of my trimmings as I work, keeping a clean workspace. So once you have both sides scored, so crisscross cuts, um, what you'll do is go ahead and try to flip it inside out. So it's kind of a cool look here but um, you can either scoop it out with a spoon. Perfect, awesome. Woo! Yes, so you can very carefully take your parry knife and cut the chunks out. So. And get as close as you can to um, not be wasteful. So is it bad to eat the skin or is it just kind of ruin the texture of the salsa? Uh, it's more so for the texture. Okay. Yes, traditionally uh, you wouldn't eat the skin and um, I'm actually not sure about, I've never had the skin before, but I'm sure Definitely add some fiber to it. Yeah. Um, but yes, we'll we'll remove it to keep the texture for the salsa. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip my other mango piece inside out as well and run my knife over that. Well, it's a little stiff, right? It's not like... Yes, it's pretty tough. Um, mango is pretty temperamental this time of year. It's, um, you want to make sure you get a nice soft mango when purchasing from the store. Um, this one might need a little bit sitting with the lime juice to soften up a bit. What are your tips for picking out a mango at the store? 
Great question. So if you want to make it that day, uh, similar to an avocado. So uh, mine has a little bit of wrinkling on it, but you wanna feel the mango and make sure that it has just a little bit of softness. So if it's rock hard, it's not gonna be ready. Super green, it's not gonna be ready. Uh, once it starts ripening a little bit more, you'll see more of the, the reddish color here. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, mine is about half and half. So it's not quite there. Uh, I did, we do store it in the cooler. So that kind of preserves it. So if you do buy a mango that's ready to go and you wait, or the recipe is for tomorrow, um, you can go ahead and store it in the fridge to keep it that way. Um, otherwise, uh, if you need to quickly ripen it, I recommend putting it into a paper bag and it keeps the air in there and helps it ripen a little bit quicker. Oh, okay. So like an avocado, you put it yeah. in a dry place, which is no light and just let it go. Yes. So just dicing my mango here. And once you have it all diced up, grab another bowl and we'll get our second salsa going. Another option too is you could buy frozen mango um, and let it thaw out. I do recommend you keeping the juices though because once it thaws out, uh, all the juices are gonna be in, all the flavor is gonna be in that juice. So keep that along with if you're going to use that for a salsa. All right, so next up we have two and a half teaspoons of the jalapeno. If you already cut it all, great, good for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off another piece of my jalapeno. Same thing, go ahead and cut the membrane out with all the seeds unless you want the heat. I'm just gonna run my knife through the inside and I'm gonna go ahead and mince that. I can feel the jalapeno through my gloves. Really? Is that hot? It's not super hot, but I can feel the, the stingy. <laughs> All right, so making a nice mince. We do have two and a half teaspoons, but really it's up to you. <clears throat> you want to add a little bit more, a little bit less? Depends who you're serving. Do they like heat? All right, so I got my jalapeno done. You guys are going to be pros at this. I do have my gigantic jalapeno left over, so I will go ahead and saran this and keep it in the fridge for another use. <clears throat> All right, next up is about four and a half ounces of bell pepper. So <clears throat> we're going to use about half of the bell pepper. So I will show you how to cut a bell. Start by cutting the top off. And then you'll have your inside seeds again. Uh, bell pepper, red bell peppers are very sweet. So um, keeping the seeds in are not gonna add any heat or anything. So it's best to just remove those. And I normally just kind of pull it out. Um, a few remaining seeds in there. Um, it's not going to harm anything. The, tip, the, the top that I cut off, I like to cut around the stem just to save that part. A lot of times people throw it out, but there's still good pepper on this. So I'm thinking about food waste. We're going to take our paring knife and just cut around the stem to save as much as we can. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna cut about, we're gonna take half of that bell pepper. So the rest of this can be saran wrapped in for another use. Um, you do have these little membranes on the inside, the white part. Um, thinking about your salsa, it's a main ingredient of it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out uh, because it's not very palatable. So we don't want anyone getting a chunk of that. We want all the bell pepper in there. And then I'm gonna run through and make vertical strips. So I'm gonna make my strips and turn the slices and go ahead and cut through and do about a half inch dice. So similar to the mango, if not a little bit smaller. I like to cut with the skin side down. Sometimes you go to the grocery store and red bells are a little pricey. Um, any sweet pepper will do. Sometimes you have the little bags of the mini sweet peppers, red, orange, and yellow. Um, you can buy a bag of those sometimes for like $2 versus one bell pepper, I believe. I was at the store the other day. It was $4.99 for one. So um, it all depends on the season as well. But as long as you get a sweet pepper, you're sitting good. Red, yellow, and green here going on. Pretty, pretty. Again, we have the onion. Adds a little flair to it. And uh, we need about a half cup red onion. So I'm gonna take my onion and just cut it in half since we already had a portion of that off. And I'm gonna pull out the center, that kind of rooted part. Doesn't taste very good when you bite into a chunk of that. So I have my onion and I'm gonna go ahead and run through and make a half inch dice. I'm sorry. Is this a quarter of an onion or half an onion? This is about a quarter. Okay. Again, kind of line up all the pieces. Sometimes you get some runaways. And I think I need to sharpen my knife. Nice, nice, easy, even dice there. It's nice with onions, the layers. Half the cutting is already done for you. And I'm gonna stack up my red onion again, the rest of it. And add a portion of it and see how it looks. 
mine looks actually pretty good. So I'm going to hold off on some of it. Um, kind of your preference, but I like a little bit of onion, but not too much. So I don't want it to be overpowering. So I'm going to hold off there. And then we have our cilantro. Looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and fold that in half. And like we mentioned in the past, kind of roll it a little, leaves together, and have a nice chop through the cilantro. Keeping the stems, so that's where all the flavor is. between cilantro and parsley? Well, one flavor, uh, but they are very similar. So I guess I don't know the properties, but the properties of it, very similar. Cilantro is, to me, has a soapy flavor, but maybe you could chime in on what you think it tastes like or anyone. What does it taste it's like? It's got a distinct flavor. It's yes. a, it is definitely a, a, a lot stronger than parsley. Yes. So if people don't like cilantro, would that be something to still be able to get that leafy green? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Similar to the uh, pico de gallo, you can substitute the parsley in there in place of it. And parsley is used in a ton of dishes uh, simply because it doesn't have much of a flavor but it's more of a color. So making something, spicing something up in terms of color by adding a little bit of parsley on top. For example, chicken parmesan. You have the chicken with the red sauce and throwing a little parsley on there adds the green touch. So at a restaurant when you see the garnishes, uh, that's more often than not parsley added to it. But in salsa case, if you're not a fan of cilantro, you can add parsley for that similar look and feel. All right, so we have a couple more ingredients. The ground cumin. I have it pre-measured for you. Wasn't sure if you had measuring spoons at your place. Uh, so you can go ahead and add the cumin in. I definitely do not have measuring spoons, so. <laughs> yes. I read your mind. <laughs> Um, we got the lime. We're going to use our other half of our lime. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze that. You're using a whole half? A half a lime. Okay. Yep. So the other half. We need a bigger bowl there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit bigger bowl. <laughs> this, is, this is the biggest bowl I have, so. <laughs> gotcha. Do a pinch of salt, and I recommend, you know, salting a little and then trying it out. Uh, a lot of times, personally, I feel recipes have a fake number of salts, and it's always better to add more than to take away. Because you can't take away. Because you can't take it away. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and stir that around and... Um, if you want, add a little bit of canola oil. I think it's just to make it a little more, add a little healthy fat in there. Um, canola oil being a healthy fat helps the body absorb vitamins, minerals, um, these nutrients. So um, I put a little splash of canola in there. I didn't throw it all in there. Um, up to you. And there we have our mango salsa. Yay. <laughs> it looks delicious. And if you put a little bit more salt on top. For you guys, I have a kosher sea salt. So they're bigger um, salt crystals. So a little bit goes a long way. It's a little bit different than table salt. 
<laughs> Let's see those salads. Or, I mean, salsa. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Awesome. Very good. Anyone else? We can see. They're shy. Well, I hope we didn't make too much of a mess in your kitchen, but any <laughs> any food that's left over, I have bell pepper and onion here. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these up. And you know, you can throw them in a stir fry soup later in the week. Um, yes, but yes. for your salsas, throw some saran wrap over that, chill in the refrigerator for a couple hours. And mango salsa is really great on fish tacos. Uh, I love having, rather than your traditional tartar and things like that, uh, throwing a salsa in there is a great option to get more fruits and veggies in your dish. So enjoy. Yeah. Any questions from anyone or how did you enjoy it? Yeah. Um, my thing is, I'm trying to, well, first of all, I need to go buy saran wrap, but, um, <laughs> um, Tupperware, you can put it in Tupperware. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's what I should have used. Anyway, uh, my question is like, I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the rest of this onion and, and I, I could just eat the pepper, but I, I don't exactly know what I want to do with the onions. So, um, that's my only thing, but other than that, yeah, this is, this is definitely fun. Awesome. Great to hear. Yeah, yeah. Red onion is a little bit challenging to fit in, but um, you could always, you know, throw it on a sub sandwich, um, duck sandwich that you can make, something easy in your dorm, or um, any type of soup. But it will last quite a bit if you don't have any ideas offhand. I would recommend if you do get a Ziploc or Saran and keep it in a Tupperware and you can freeze this. So onion freezes oh. really well. Um, okay. You could even dice it, dice it right now and freeze it that way too. Maybe you have a pizza, you could throw some red onion on pizza. It's a little bit different than white onion, but um, you still get that flavor. So freezing it for a later date. Yeah, or if I just left it in the fridge, how long do you think it would last? It would last a week or so, probably okay. a week. Okay. Um, the outside will start getting soft. Oh, okay. Not too long. Okay. If you all would mind, take a picture and you could share it. Hashtag Teaching Kitchen UWGB. Um, you can tag UWGB Dining and Student Life because we'd love to see and really get the word out and have more of you join us next month. So next month, we are going to do uh, Amped Up Ramen. So it's a ramen noodle bowl. Oh, okay. So kind of taking your traditional, how much is ramen these days? 15 cents? I don't know. 45 cents. 45 cents. <laughs> uh, and putting a healthy spin on it. All right, thank you all for joining. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, enjoy and have a wonderful Tuesday. Have a great day. So I cannot click to end.